All right, we're back. Johnny Tremaine, A Story of Boston and Revolt by Esther Forbes. And illustrated by Lind Ward. And published by Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. Boston and New York. Yay, Boston! Anyway, we are on section four, so let's get to it. They just received a silver order from Mr. John Hancock himself, who actually owns their house. And Johnny kind of spoke out of turn, but he did accept the order because Mr. Lapham was sort of, uh, he had no response to Mr. Hancock. He's just thinking and slow and old, and that's how the author is trying to portray him, that Johnny is the go-to guy. Section 4 in Chapter 1. The sun stood directly overhead, pressing its heat down upon the town as though it held an enormous brass basin. There was not wind enough to take a cat boat from Hancock's Wharf to Noddle Island. In the Lapham shop windows and doors uh, were left open, oh, in the Lapham shop, windows and doors were left open to catch what breeze might come up the wharf, but there wasn't any breeze. Old Mr. Lapham had worked well in the morning. He said if Johnny could do the handles, he himself could get the basin done in time. But after dinner, he had gone down to the old willow behind the coal house, put a basket over his head, and gone to sleep. Dove and Dusty had, therefore, left to go swimming. Johnny was making out of wax an exact replica of the pitcher handle, only enlarging it. He tried again and again, never quite satisfied with his work, but confident that he could do it, because we know if Johnny is anything, he is a confident person. It was long past dinner hour when he crossed the entry into the kitchen. The fire was out. The table cleared except for his place. Scylla had evidently been left to wait on him whenever he felt like eating. The success of Mr. Hancock's order was so dependent upon him, no one would scold him today because he chose to be an hour late. Johnny took his seat and Scylla put down the slate she had been drawing on. She gave him a piece of cold meat pie, a flat loaf of rye bread, dried apples, and ran down cellar to fetch him a flagon of cold ale. He drank the ale and then more leisurely began on the pipe. And remember, like, you guys might think this is totally weird, but kids would drink beer because it was a safe drink. Everybody drank beer, okay? It wasn't like anybody cared. There was no drinking age. It was just, here's a drink. With hardly a word, Scylla went back to the settle where Isana was sprawled and picked up her slate. She drew very well. It would be just about nothing, Johnny thought to teach that girl to write. She's doing it for you, Johnny, Isana said at last. What are you doing for me, Syl? She's designing you a beautiful mark so when you are man-grown and master smith, you can stamp your silver with it. <laughs> I've five more years to go. No matter how good my work may be, I have to mark it with your grandpa's old pellets and L's. Johnny's forgotten morning prayers and all those wonderful humble people, said Scylla. Look, I've got your J and T sort of entwined. Too hard to read. Then, too, he could not imagine why he came out with this secret. When I'm Master Smith, I'm going to use all three of my initials. Secret. All three... J-L-T. Neither of the girls had ever heard of a poor working boy with three names. Now this is, this is something that people of wealth, it looks blurry, sorry. Uh, people of wealth had middle names or multiple names. If you think about the, the Prince of England, Queen Elizabeth's grandson, when they name their children, it's always multiple names. And so simple people would have simple names, but J-L-T. Three names? What? Neither of the girls had ever heard of a poor working boy with three names. You're not making up? Scylla asked almost respectfully. I've heard tell of folks with three names, but I never saw one before. Look at me, my girl. 
He got up to go back to the shop. Wait, Johnny, what is that middle name? It begins with L? As far as you are concerned, it ends with L, too. I'll bet it's something so awful you are ashamed of it, like ladybug or leapfrog. <laughs> I'll bet it's lamentable. <laughs> that means to lament something is to be sad about it. <laughs> Johnny grinned, untempted by her insults. In the shop, it was so hot he could not handle the wax. The solitude in which he worked depressed him a little. For the first time, he was afraid he could not get the handles right. All the shops had stopped work because of the heat. He could hear the other boys running and splashing, diving off the wharf into the cold water. He locked the shop. Now even Mr. Lapham would have to ask, ask him if he wanted to get in, and he ran off to swim, so he locked everybody out. Later after sunset, he could get on with the model, even if he had to work by lamplight. Now, if it's really terrific heat, and when I say terrific, I mean a lot of heat, it's very hot in Boston. And when it's hot, the wax is just, it's, it's softening. It's softening. And so if you don't have firm wax, then you can't make a mold. So it, the wax has to be a certain temperature. That's the end of section four and the end of this video. Ooh, subscribe to my new channel. In fact, I still have my super fun sign. Yay. I like to do read alouds too, but I also have a lot of math videos. So you can be a subscriber and find out what kind of cool things I'm recording. Yay. See you on the next one.